Seven years ago, I applied to medical school with a 3.98 GPA and a 5.19 MCAT. I felt terrified. Why? Because every year, these perfect stat pre-meds post their nightmares onto Reddit and Student Doctor Network. And flooding into the comments are pre-meds who say, of course, 60% of pre-meds don't get in anywhere. Or one in every six perfect stat pre-meds always have a hidden red flag. Did I have a hidden red flag? Do you have a 60% chance of getting in nowhere? Today, I'll share the truth about your med school chances. And at the end, I'll show you how to calculate your specific odds. Part one, the 60% rejection rate. This number comes from AAMC data, specifically table A23. Over the last three years, 165,326 pre-meds applied to medical school and 69,228 were accepted. That's a 41.9% acceptance rate or a 58.1% rejection rate. Now, because roughly 60% of pre-meds were rejected does not mean that you have a 60% chance of being rejected. We can stratify this data based on factors that we know affect medical school acceptance chances. I'll give you two examples. First, your stats, your GPA and your MCAT. Let's say you have greater than a 3.79 GPA and greater than a 5.17 MCAT, like I did. Over the last three years, there were 12,843 pre-meds with that exact stat portfolio, and 10,645 were accepted. That means 17.1% or more than one in six didn't get in anywhere with those stats. Now, you might have two reactions here. If you're normal, you'd say, hey, that's three times better than that 60% figure. But you're probably more like neurotic pre-med Mike, and your reaction is, holy cow, I could have perfect stats and still there's a one in six chance I get in nowhere? Well, yes, and that's because we all know that your GPA and your MCAT alone are not the only two factors that determine your acceptance odds. Later in the video, I will talk about every factor that is in your control. But why don't we talk about a second example? a factor that maybe is not in your control, your state of residence. This is table A-3, and this is table A-4. They show the number of applicants and the number of matriculants by state of residence. Divide the two and you get this combo table, the percent of matriculants stratified by state. Again, this is observational correlational data. I'm not telling you to move from Florida to Vermont, but if you're from California, you probably want to stay close to home. And in your backyard are schools like UCLA, UCSF, and Stanford. Their sheer difficulty probably lowers your chances overall. Now, if you're Kentucky, the University of Louisville and the University of Kentucky have a vested interest in training you because there's a high chance you stay home and care for the region. Your chances of getting an acceptance is probably a touch higher, and that's reflected in the numbers. All of this adds nuance to that blanket 60% figure. Now, ultimately, you will get in or you won't. And so it's important to know what a strong competitive application actually looks like. We have eight full AMCAS applications that earned acceptances to some of the best programs in the country. Over 13,500 pre-meds are part of our community. To join, click the application database link in our description box below now. Part number two, your perspective feels like, but isn't the truth. What you see on Student Doctor Network and Reddit are outliers. They are not reality. For example, here's a 4.0 GPA, 527 MCAT, president of a club on campus, founder of a nonprofit, multiple poster publications from my alma mater, UCLA, that got in no way. No way. Remember, 83% of students like this got into at least one medical school. You are seeing one pre-med. You are not seeing the other 83% who earned multiple acceptances. But when you see this post, it's emotional, it's dramatic, and it's scary because if this pre-med couldn't get in, then how could you? Again, this is not the truth. This is an inverse survivorship bias, a negativity bias. If I showed you another 80 pre-meds just like this who did get into multiple schools, you would write them off saying, of course they did. They have perfect stats. Another example happens when you sit in the middle of your Gen Chem class. At UCLA, there are 300 other students around you. And that's just the first section of the day. There are four other sections going on the same quarter. And you do the crazy math and something insane like 3,000 people are going to take Gen Chem this year. To be clear, those aren't 3,000 premiums. Their neuroticisms don't reflect the actual pool of applicants. 
Ultimately, only a fraction of those students end up applying. So don't let their opinions, their anxieties mislead your pre-venture. Next, we're going to talk about how to calculate your chances of getting into medical school. And I'm gonna break that down into three simple steps. But before that, if you're applying to medical school in the coming year or two, you do not want to make any of these critical mistakes. Our pre-med catalysts that submit their applications on time have a 92% acceptance rate. That's more than double the national average. And our results are because we work so closely with students. In fact, we can only take four students per month until we're full. If you'd be interested in getting into some of the strongest programs in the country, click the application cycle advising link in the description box below now to book a free strategy call before we're full for the cycle. Part number three, how to calculate your chances at getting into medical school. Step number one, know your data. Table A23 gives correlational data based on your stats. The AAMC facts report gives you more data based on your specific demographics, your school, and your region. Let's say you have a 3.85 GPA, a 512 MCAT, and you're from Kentucky. 66.7% of people with your stats earned at least one acceptance. And because your home state is Kentucky, your odds are probably a bit higher than that. Step number two, lever up and lever down. There are only six levers that you can pull to change your medical school admissions odds. GPA, MCAT, extracurriculars, letters of recommendations, your school list, and your written application interviews. Table A23's GPA and MCAT data will get you a start. Then evaluate your other levers. Let's say your research is stronger than that featured in our application database. That probably bumps your 66.7% a bit higher. Then evaluate your clinical experience. Now, are your letter writers generic or are you confident that they will move heaven and earth to get you a white coat? Of course, this works in the opposite direction too. If you have a red flag, like say no clinical experience or your school list is totally and inappropriately top heavy, then those lever down and lower your chances significantly. Step number three, not all schools are made equal. Remember, you may have 66.7%, say 70% chance of getting into at least one medical school. Now, where you earn that acceptance isn't random. If you're a 3.85 GPA, 512 MCAT from Kentucky with strong research, your school list probabilities probably look something like this. High probability, University of Louisville, University of Kentucky, strong research programs located in the South. Medium probability, schools located in the South or the Central regions. Schools with strong research emphasis. Lower probability, very mission specific schools not aligned with this stat profile. Ultimately, the goal isn't to pin down one exact number. If I told you your odds were 52% as opposed to 56%, it wouldn't change your behavior in any meaningful way. Now that you know how to calculate your med school chances, you'll want to know what adcoms value most. Here's a video about what they can't stand, but don't always share. It's here. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.